Hey everybody, it's Don Music here. You know what we're gonna do now. You know what we're gonna do now. We're gonna jump into Hunter. This is the second last song of the album Queen of the Murder Scene from the rock band called The Warning. This is the middle of chapter four, the final chapter. We watched the vlog last night and uh, heard Pow, Danny, and Ally describe the songwriting process, the recording process, the creative side of how they come up with the song. And we're going to do a few versions here of this. Three, I guess, probably. Three versions. They're all unique and they're all pretty special, I think. All right, let's jump in with Live Lunario. Here we go. The warning, Hunter, from Queen of the Murder Scene. <laughs> That was awesome. That was just awesome. Okay, so let's go back and take some listens to some of these details. I already already heard details in this I've never heard before. Listening with headphones is very different from listening with speakers. I've tended to watch these shows actually using like studio monitors in a studio, recording studio situation. And 
I mean, the sound's amazing. I love listening to it that way, cranked up. It sounds incredible. But you don't get the stereo separation. You don't pick out the details of the facts that the fact that they mixed it so that Danny's in the middle, Allie's on top of voices, Allie's on the left, and Pow's on the right most of the time. And I mean, I, they change it up. Like if Pow's singing lead, then they put her in the middle, you know. But yeah, it's, it's really neat. Uh, and it's taught me a lot about how well uh, Pow sings backgrounds and how good a singer Allie is. So that's pretty cool. Anyway. But I listened to the beginnings of three different amazing recordings of this from pro recorded live shows. I personally liked the sound quality, the mix, the amp sounds, the drum sounds, everything about this Lonario better than I like the other ones right now. I didn't used to feel that way until I started doing this deep dive. I really like the tone here. It's really heavy. It reminds me most of the album which makes sense because I think it's probably the performance that's closest in time to the album as well. So Danny starts out right away doing that like So that's a tritone. A tritone is, as I've described long, long ago, is a, an interval of a diminished fifth or an augmented fourth. It's one two, three, four, and a half. Uh, da, da. It's not quite five, but it's more than four. It's four and a half, or five minus a half. So that's a tritone. It's called a tritone because of historical reasons of the way math is calculated between uh, tones. But anyway, a tritone is the familiar common musician way of talking about it and if you say that to a musician it's like that tritone is cool they'll be like oh yeah dude yeah and they get it or they'll pretend to get it and they think that you're cool and you know what you're talking about so remember that tritone um it's a diminished fifth though yes dun da 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 this is a shuffle feel dun ga chin ga dun ga chin ga dun ga chin ga dun ga chin a shuffle is that one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 sort of feel, right? Boom, chick, boom, ba chick, boom. And I mean, a typical shuffle on a drum would involve like ka chink, ka ding, ka chink, ka ding, on the snare drum, ka chink, ka ding, ka, you know, but there's lots of variations of that. And Pow is not a blues shuffle drummer. She is a rock slash semi metal drummer. So she, she does a lot of the cool stuff on like kick, <laughs> kick drum and toms and whatever else is around. She uses the whole kit. She isn't restricted to like, I'm going to do everything on a snare drum. So it makes it heavier and it makes it more, more raunchy and it makes it the warning. <laughs> and she loves using that crash for time. And I call it for time because that's the one that she's going on or going ting, 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 ting on or whatever, depending on the song and the time signature. But because it's a crash and it's a very washy crash, it just continues on like whoosh, as she's playing it and it's a great, great sound. Let's start this again. And I love this. So kick drum and the crash cymbal, I think. Yeah, I don't think she's hitting a snare. I think she's doing kick drum and crash cymbal and then palm muting the, palm muting. <laughs> Muting the cymbal, grabbing the cymbal with her hand. Sorry, I'm talking like a guitar player. Along with the, so those are shots with the bass guitar on beat one of every other bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean it could be one, two, three, four as the bars. One and a two and a three and a four and a or it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it depends how you, you decide to count the bars. It's entirely arbitrary up to the band. But uh, regardless. <laughs> And the bass is dun, 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 with the snare drum. Great, great way to build up the fill together. The drums and bass are really synced up in this. By the way, that's a Manson guitar. Manson, M-A-N-S-O-N, I believe is how it's spelled. One of their main shareholder owners is the guitarist from Muse. Makes them very famous, and they are his signature guitar, kind of, you know. And they are amazing instruments. If you notice on this guitar, we can see it really clearly in this photo. If you know anything about guitars, it's shaped like a Fender Telecaster, kind of, the body shape and 
basics are kind of like a Fender Telecaster, which is a legendary, one of the first electric solid body guitars ever made. Uh, possibly the first. It was actually called a broadcaster originally, then it became the Telecaster. I think that was the order of events. Um, and I think it was the first electric instrument probably that Fender, Leo Fender made, like mass produced. Uh, maybe it was the Fender Precision that was the first thing he made. I'm not sure which came first, the guitar or the bass. They were roughly around the same time. Anyway, the Fender Telecaster, an absolutely classic instrument. This does not have the exact same configuration as a Fender Telecaster. It has a lot of changes to it. Pickups are different in it than a Fender. Um, the material workmanship is different. The, the wood used for the fretboard is different. The uh, bridge design is extremely different. It's more like the bridge that was made famous by Gibson. I'm not sure about the headstock. It looks to me like it doesn't have string trees on it, which probably means it has an angled headstock, but it could just be the fact that it's well-designed. It may not be angled, but it could just be far back and then has staggered tuners. Either way, it has modern technology to make things engineered extremely well. I noticed that it looks like the string angles on the headstock. I'm pointing at the screen. That really helps you guys. You know where it has the logo? It says Manson. You can see the white on the end of the guitar with an underline wavy thing under it. That's the headstock where the tuners are. So it looks like the string angle doesn't go all wonky when it goes there, which is nice. They're all, they continue in a straight line, but then they have to go downwards to have string pressure built on the nut, which is kind of like the final fret, even though it's not made out of metal normally. As you can see, it's black in this case. The, the headstock itself can be like, if the, if the neck goes like this, then the headstock can be angled backwards, like it is on my most of my basses and my main guitar, actually. Uh, and that allows you just to have the strings just going to each tuner and the tuners are all the same height, but they're, because it's angled backwards, it adds a nice even angle back pressure on the, on the strings. Or uh, it could be flat and not down far, very far, like a fender. And then they have these string trees, pieces of metal that pull down the strings in pairs generally to have enough down pressure. The drawback of that is that they tend to grab the strings and it makes for tuning stability challenges, but it does work really well too. Um, or another way that is more modern is they have staggered tuners. So the tuners progressively are closer down into the guitar as you get as you get further towards the end of the guitar. So there's more and more down pressure equal to the angle because the string there's more string length. So you have to have the string lower at the other end to have a consistent down pressure, downward pressure on the nut. Anyway, blah, 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 technology, boring stuff. The interesting, cool thing about this is if you look at the other end, closest to us here, the body of the guitar, where the bridge is, there's two silver knobby things and like a little screw on the body of the guitar that don't seem to be attached to anything. They appear to be knobs, like volume control knobs or something. But on a Manson, at least on many Mansons, maybe not on this Manson, I don't know. But looking at those, it makes me think it might be like that. Manson has a lot of stuff that uh, the guy from Muse really likes to integrate into his guitars. Uh, they like to throw technology into their guitars, um, like Muse does, into their bass and their guitar, especially the bass player. It's crazy. So they, they throw things, like they have a removable panel on some Mansons, and that might be what those knobs are for. You take them off, unscrew them, and unscrew the little hole, and pop it off, and there's a hole there where you can install something. They may have their own circuit boards, I don't know, from Manson, but I believe there's an option to also throw a, oh, what's that thing called? I should have thought that, thought of this before. Chaos Pad. Chaos Pad. K-A-O-S-S, -S, I think it's spelled. Anyway, it's it's a electronic synthesizer modulator effector with touch screen and cool graphics on it that guitarists and synthesizer players like to mess around with, but it isn't terribly convenient to use as a professional live musician because it's not attached to your instrument. So Manson had this clever idea or maybe the guy from used it, I don't know which, of having a removable panel where you can install one into the actual guitar. I, I noticed that uh, our Danny here doesn't like to do that. She doesn't have that option, and that's fine with me. Um, it's up to her. But these are exceptional guitars, beautiful, and with a really, really nice tone and amazing sustain and articulation. They're wonderful, wonderful instruments. So I just wanted to point all of that out. Yeah, that's <laughs> I love how the bass doubles the guitar in that part. That's totally awesome too. Very, very cool. So interesting. The guitar here doing power chords. Dun, 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 dun. Those are the, the notes on the chords that she's playing. But she's doing... Naturally, because that's what everyone's playing in the song. And she's palm muting it. But the first one that she lands on 
after each chord change is not palm muted. So it makes a big sound. She does like the last of the previous chord and the first of the next chord, not palm muted. No, yeah, I didn't notice that before. Down, down. So they land on the minor third and come down to the one. That's awesome. Guitar track in the background. Very quiet. So it adds to the change up as you build up the verse. Very cool. Her face, and this is awesome. Come on to me now. The time is running out. When both of your feet are long, dark steps, you couldn't climb. I'll be there. Dun, dun. So this is going up. So da -da 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 -da, this minor key that it's in normally. Now we go up to the second. Interesting. So the chord, the key change here is into the second. It's not a relative minor, it's just minor second. Duh. Well, it's not minor second. It's a second, but it's a minor chord. Uh. Um, it's a major second transition. Um, so now we're in. Da, 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 da. And then the relative major of that two chord, which is the four chord of the original key, but the minor third chord of this second key. Da, 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 da. That's a major chord. And then back to the tonic, the root of the song dun, 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 except it's major now dun, dun, dun. so we are we did actually change key then yeah she's right how i remember her saying that in the vlog she actually did do a key change in this that's the melody but the chords are and so this the third chord of the uh of this section it's a major chord, but that's the same chord, except minor that the song's actually in. Right? So that wasn't the melody. I was just demonstrating how melody could fit in that. That would be minor. So yeah, that's uh, that's really a neat transition. It changes up one whole tone during this part of the bridge, or is this the chorus? Oh, not sure. What is the chorus? Is the chorus the sing-along part where they go run? Or is this the chorus? Oh. Oh, this is the military drum part also that Pab was talking about in the vlog. As she said, it's basically just, it's rudiments. But yeah, that, that's cool. I like it. And I notice here, Ally on the left, Pow on the right, they're both singing. I don't know the words, but you get the idea. They're singing that harmony. The two of them are singing the same note left and right, while Danny's singing. My mother's singing. Da, 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 da. It's actually the range, the octave there, and not the first octave I sang in. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So they go to the minor sixth here. Da, da. Minor sixth of the key, but it's a major chord. Da, 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 da. And then the five chord, which I think is a power chord. Da da dum, da 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 four, da da dum five, da 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 sixth, da 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 five, da 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 four, da 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 five. The time is running out. Come on to me now. The time is running out. So now we're we've changed keys to the two. Of the original. So within this new key, this is the one chord. It's the three chord. It's the flat seven chord. It's the four chord. One, seven, six, flat six, four, one, minor third. Seven, plus four, 
stay on the floor. So they added a bar there. That's an extra bar. And then they go back down, change key back to the original key, and now we're going to go to the one chord of the original key, which is actually flat seven of the key we were just in. <laughs> Except it's minor now. With that tritone. Da -da. Verse two. Pow's using her famous tom, but she's doing it do 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 because that's the rhythm. One two three 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 one two three. But she only hits the one and the three of that. Nice. And there's that uh, background guitar. On the snare. That fill right there, that's the one that Pow was talking about where she had this giant snare drum and she'd play at the edge of it. And then as she built it up, she'd move towards the center of the snare. So in the studio version, that's what you're hearing. Very cool. And I'm sure she does it here too, but she's not using the giant snare drum here probably. She's playing a lead guitar line, or, you know. Yeah, it's a lead guitar line. It's not a solo, but it's a lead guitar line. Listen to the bass part here. Sounds like you're doing dun, 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 dun. on the bass. It's so cool. Lead guitar. That was a nice, like very bluesy lick. Run! That was an awesome. That scream of run. That was really cool. So right now the bass is just going ding 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 one note on that rhythm with the same rhythm as the drums while the guitar is playing ding 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 they're playing very quietly and there's that whisper part going on with Ale and Pow where Ale is milliseconds ahead of Pow but it sounds really cool together they're saying the same phrase it's just it's that cool sort of effect of them saying it together that makes it very mysterious. Coming back, there's no escape. That's what they're saying. I could hear Ali saying the first part and I could hear Pau saying the second part more clearly, but they're both saying it. Very cool. Now the bass joins the guitar in the same leg. And oddly, Danny opted to continue to play the lick here live rather than playing the solo because there's like a lead solo line going on right now. In the background. And they just sort of made that just a track instead. It's an interesting choice. I'm sure she had good reason. Probably because this feel part that she's doing right now is more critical to the song. Extra bar right here. So right, right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, right, left, right, left, right, left. That way you end up with right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left, right, left, all the way down the kit, which is just a convenient way to do it. You need to keep some sort of a pattern going in the drums or else you're eventually going to get messed up. So if you're going to do a dun tigga then you have to do, um, you have to do two rights in a row at the beginning. Right, right, left, right, left, right, left. Very cool. So we're in the transposed key again. We're up a whole tone from the song's root key.
I love that. Run, run. They're all screaming run. That's so cool. So I think the key, it's interesting. I was wondering if it was, I don't know which section we're in right now. I think the basic key is A that the song's in. But the transposed up key is B. I'm, that's what it sounds like in my memory right now. All right, so I want to jump over to another performance. I didn't even talk about the vocals in this. They're awesome all the way through, obviously. This is an incredible part. What's interesting, though, is that so the vocal in this, as I found out yesterday, I didn't realize this before, is sung from the perspective of a different character, a new character, the Grim Reaper. Which brings me to my next performance. As someone in a comment yesterday, or maybe this morning, mentioned, they have three singers in the band, and one of them happens to sing this song live once in a while. How come they didn't have Allie become the part of the, the singer of the new character? Because she can sing the song perfectly well, and we're going to listen to it right now. Alejandra singing Hunter live. <laughs> stop this because this is really 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 good lead singing i've heard her sing lead in a few different performances of different songs when she was younger generally and it was okay-ish i mean it was pretty good you know but wasn't a very developed singer you know it was always pretty good you know at times excellent but inconsistent i'm just being honest over the last few years she has improved dramatically which is kind of natural she's a lot younger than her sisters she had youngness against working against her, you know, youth working against her, just as as uh, as pouted when she was little, right? Um, but uh, she has such a unique voice. It's got a real dark beauty to it, you know. It's it's got like a velvety quality to it. It's not like her sister's lead vocal sound is, but she's got some power to it, and she can belt. And she knows how to use her voice really well. I mean, this sounds really good. I'm loving this. 
And from this performance, I would say maybe back in the old days when she was little, they, they wouldn't have considered doing this. But as a young adult now, or an old teen now, I mean, which is not what this is. She wasn't even there yet. This is actually a younger performance still. But I've, I've seen just really poor quality recordings of excellent performances by Alejandra in much more recent years, where she also sounds very much like this one, but this is the best recording I could find. And, uh, you know, this should be her character. But she was so young when they recorded the album. She really wasn't, a, wasn't much of a lead singer yet at that point, probably, right? But she's getting there, man. This is good stuff. Gotta love Pow. <laughs> oh, I caught her with her hair flying in the air. That's awesome. Actually, all three of them look awesome in this. You can't see Danny's face. You can't see Pow. <laughs> I mean, Allie's face. And Pow's hair head is exploding right now. That's a keeper. All right. Anyway, let's continue this. Stuff. That was a really cool performance. And last but not least, we have another performance to watch. The acoustic version. This is going to be interesting. These acoustic shows they did, they're really good. They're well recorded. They're fascinating. Uh, and they're just on acoustic guitars and like a fully digital mini drum kit thing with pads, but Pow has to stand up while she plays on one foot. And they can't really do solos because it's just acoustic guitar and acoustic bass guitar, but it showcases their vocals and the tones and the skills really well. And Alejandra's going through like an amp sim on her bass, so she's got some, some grunge to it. Let's check it out. <laughs> That's interesting. So in the in the in the actual version, normally it's the guitar that does that intro, but they left it to to uh, Ale. It's totally switched up. Ale's doing all the guitar stuff right now, and Danny's just playing chords. She's not even playing the part with her at all. Go Ale! All the rock and stuff is her right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep stopping it. And you can see there that the kick drum, the right foot of, of Pow, that's where all the shuffle beat is coming from, is from her foot. <laughs> to have 90% of the music coming from Alejandra and Pow is really cool. But now we get to see Danny take over. One step behind.
Okay, I noticed something there. So, dun, 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 dun. Danny started playing it right away. This is the first time she's done any lead lines on this. Um, and the first time Ally played the regular bass part, boom, ba, dun, ba, dun, dun. then she immediately was like, oh, yeah, we, I need to be doing the lead stuff. Dun, dun, dun. So she doubled it right away. Cool. Yeah, awesome. So they did a good job of uh, getting these arrangements together for the acoustic instruments. They had to modify some parts. It's interesting they gave more of it to Alejandra. She's got like an overdrive on her acoustic bass. Very, very cool. Well, that was awesome. That was really, really cool. I love the tune. It makes so much more sense now uh, that it's sung from the perspective of the Grim Reaper chasing after uh, the Queen of the Murder scene for doing the Reaper's job. (laughs) And he wants her to stop, so he's got to stop her. And that's exactly what he's doing here. All right, let's take a look at the lyrics. Here we go, the lyrics. I'm one step behind when you close your eyes. I'm breathing on your neck. I'm the chill down your spine. Remember, this is the Reaper to the Queen, right? Your shadow, your ghost, I'm here to collect the payment that you're running from, the lives that you've spent. (laughs) So, in other words, because the Queen has already been killing people, she can't stay doing this she needs to pay up for this and paying up for the reaper is death right you taunt me with words that don't make a sound (laughs) you mock with your actions you laugh with no doubt you relish the pain well cherish it more because after this there'll be nothing to feel anymore oh yeah that's pretty fatal sounding fall onto me now your time is running out fall onto me now your time is running out (laughs) When both of your feet fall under steps you couldn't climb, I'll be there to pull you under, take back what is mine. You think you can take my title away? While I'm coming back, better run away. It's my turn. I'll pass on judgment. You can't escape your fate. Run! (laughs) Cool. This makes so much more sense when I read the lyrics, too. Really cool. I'm right at your door, and I'm counting to three. (laughs) Don't need no permission to take you with me. You went through hell. You'll go through it again. It's not a question of why. It's a question of when. Fall onto me now. Your time is running out. Fall onto me now. Your time is running out. When both of your feet fall under, steps you couldn't climb, I'll be there to pull you under. Take back what is mine. You think you can take my title away? While I'm coming back, better run away. It's my turn. I'll pass on judgment. You can't escape your fate. Run. I'm coming back. There's no escape. 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 When both of your feet fall under, steps you couldn't climb, I'll be there to pull you under, take back what is mine. You think you can take my title away? While I'm coming back, better run away. It's my turn. I'll pass on judgment. You can't escape your fate. Run, run, run. Wow. (laughs) Cool. Makes me think of Run, Run, Run Away, which Run Away is a song from their first album. Anyway, yeah, very, very cool. All right, let's listen to, uh, let's read Timberwolf 762's song meaning. It's always very interesting. And he's referencing Vlog 26, which is what I did a video on late last night. Per the girls' Vlog number 26, in Hunter, the Grim Reaper appears and delivers a fatal wound to the Queen at the end of this song. However, since the Queen has multiple personalities and is psychotic, it is easy to see that the Grim Reaper is simply a manifestation of either the evil side or of some other personality inside her, and that she commits suicide. Ah, I was wondering about that. Is any of this, like, literal or figurative? Eh, it's figurative. Makes sense. Cool. Perhaps one personality becomes that it is killing another one of the personalities. This song could be the Queen's conscience reasserting itself, letting the evil side know that the war within will never end. And as I wondered at one point, maybe technically speaking, it's the good girl inside actually winning the war and their actual physical body is still alive, but 
personalities are lost inside forever and this is now a you know like a catatonic state person i don't know all these possibilities very very interesting thank you for all that information timberwolf and uh thank you all for going down this rabbit hole with me this is just incredible we are one song remaining from well ironically enough the end and we'll do that within the next day or two Alrighty, guys thank you so much like comment subscribe away please thank you very much have a great saturday evening if that's what day it is where you are and time thank you rock on